my name is Jenna. I have a blue-green dominant Camelot macaw named Basil. I decided that I wanted to get a bird because, I don't know, I can't put it into words. They, there's just like an emotional connection that you can have with a bird that's different than a dog or a cat. Finding that bond is super duper special and it's unlike anything else that I've ever experienced before. I've always been interested, but when I heard about free flight in particular, I was sold. I was like, this is something that I need to do. I have to do this. I chose Birdtrix to be Basil and I's trainer because when I was researching and when I was trying to find people that I could get reliable information from, anything that you or Dave said, you broke it down into a way that made it made sense. And when everything was broken down, when I started comparing other information that I was seeing, I, I just, I agreed with you guys almost too much. Like, it was like annoying. Like, it was just annoying how much I was like, yeah, that totally makes sense. I don't even think I seriously considered any other trainers because I just fell in love with you guys as people, as bird owners. You guys like are so inspiring and the way that you like care about your flock from the videos that I've seen and kind of like the behind the scenes stuff, it seems like you really care about your people too. I found that it was important that I connected with the people as well because you're only as good as, you know, the like the connections that you make in that way as well. You guys were just annoyingly awesome and so I couldn't, I couldn't resist. <laughs> So we're going all the way to the edge. Great. There was not a point in time where I was ever frustrated or that I was mad at Basil because he is a bird and he is a baby and he is the cutest little thing ever. But there were things that I could do to do better. And trying to be patient with him and myself because I have all the patience in the world for Basil. I like he could do no wrong, but it was myself that I had to kind of regulate and check in and be like, hey, you're, you're doing okay. <laughs> it's all right. I think that I was very uncomfortable in pushing him the ways that he needed to be pushed to see where his boundaries were. And we never crossed boundaries, you know, like we pushed it a little bit, but we didn't, like there was never a point in time where he was scared or he, you know, like he might have been slightly uncomfortable, but never scared. And I don't think I could have pushed that because I thought that that was way too far, that we were way far out. Like maybe in six months, like we'll be able to go down like five feet, you know? Like I was just, I was so terrified because he just seems so fragile and so just 
gloopy baby, you know? Like, he just seems like he's just just incapable of doing anything. But it was really me that was, like, putting on the brakes and making it harder for him to actually learn what he was doing. I got a super stellar cage. Um, my indoor cage is nine and a half feet by five and a half feet wide and probably six and a half feet tall. And to go along with that, I got a 10 foot outdoor aviary that I could put him in. He had tons of cover. He had tons of toys and different levels. When it came time for really training, I got a 55 foot batting net that was, I personally think was essential because we were able to do controlled flights outside and he didn't have a harness on. There was no comfort, you know, blanket that was weighing on him. A non-negotiable for me, 100% was a GPS with telemetry in it. So I could, you know, one, whenever he's outside, I can track him. And if he flies off or if he gets scared or if he gets caught in the wind, I'm able to know exactly where he is. But I also used it during training to see, oh, so we spent, you know, X amount of minutes in the air. This was our, you know, speed. We were able to do this. And you can use that on, like, flights, too, outside. So you can see their exact pattern. You can see how far they, how high they went. You can see the speed that they went. At the core of it, I was really paying for an extra level of peace of mind. Am I going to rely super duper heavy on that and be like, mm, I don't really know. I'm like on the fence about this flight location, but I have a GPS, so it'll be totally fine. No. There was one day where I opened the, the glass door and we had curtains and I would knot the curtains up during the day. I closed the door behind me. I heard it shut. I walked in open the aviary, put my hand in there, he got on my hand, and then I put him towards the door. And I wasn't holding on to him very hard, and he bolted. And I looked and I saw that the door had bounced off the knot in the curtains and opened just enough for him to get out. Basil! Basil! Basil, come on! So I freak out. He flies towards his aviary. Pretty sure a gust of wind pulled him really up, like a, like a lot. It, it, he went vertical, like it was crazy. And he ended up in a, like a 50 foot tree at the very top, just squirming and like very uncomfortable. <laughs> But this was like halfway through our flight training, so of course I broke down and I called Dave, borderline crying, wondering if I would ever get my bird back. <laughs> he was totally not worried about it at all. He was, I'll call you back, like, I'll call you back in like two minutes, like, give me a sec. And I, hearing that in the moment was not great, <laughs> but uh, we kind of debriefed. And it was because he was 100,000% confident that I was going to be able to get him back. I took out my phone and I wanted to zoom in on him and I'm just calling him. I was by myself. The nearest person was like 30, 45 minutes away. And so I'm just sitting here looking through my phone, calling him, just hoping that he would come back. I'm right here. Basil! Oh, And then he just 50 feet straight down, just goes. He didn't have the most graceful landing. I ended up messing it up and I lunged for him and he, that made him miss me. But then he turned around and made a awesome landing. I don't know if I would have gotten him back without flight training and desensitization and everything that goes along with it. Because if it was his first time outside and his first time flying in an open environment, he could have spooked, he could have not went into the tree, he could have went, you know, 10 miles away. He could have 
just been paralyzed by fear and not been able to know how to get down, I will pretty confidently say that if I didn't do the course, I don't think I would have ever saw him again. I mean, it'll probably happen again just because they're flighted birds and they're very smart and mistakes happen and it's nobody's fault, but having the tools in your toolkit, it really can save a bird's life because not only your heart is going to be empty because, you know, your beloved, you know, pet animal, you know, got out and you never see it again, but also the bird is not equipped to live in the environment that it is and it will probably not end well. Day one outside, I was pretty nervous. We put him on a perch and it was just a quick A to B, just easy flight and I probably got a foot or two away from him and that first, like that two foot flight felt like fireworks. It was just, the, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> um, it was the most intense, like emotional thing that I've like ever experienced. I felt like I did good, you know? Like I did what I needed to do in order for him to live like the best life. And I knew in that moment that it was like, <laughs> I'm so like, oh my goodness. Um, it was the start and it was like just the beginning of like this inc like insane, incredible journey. And it was a closed chapter in one sense, but it was an open chapter in another. And it was just like, it was crazy. having like a really good time he didn't know it like he didn't he didn't really understand what he was doing because obviously there are things that I can't teach him that no one can it's instinct and it's wind and they have to experience it and but I knew I did right in that moment and like if anything if everything else went wrong if you know something were to happen or you know anything in that moment it felt perfect. It was awesome. I think I'll look back on that. I don't think I'll ever forget it. And like the feeling that that like stirred up in me. And I was very good at controlling my emotions at the moment because I didn't want to be a distraction <laughs> away from him. <laughs> but yeah, looking back on it, I definitely cried that night. And I was just so happy for him and for myself. Like I did it, I did it too. When I tell you that I was nervous about this trip, I think it would be like the understatement of the year. And that's a lot coming from me. I just wanted it to go well. And I wanted to see him have fun. And whatever that meant to him, that's what I wanted. And after the trip, I can like 100,000% check that off. So day one was pretty much 
all about basil and I. It was all about basil. And my day two was Landon's first day. And I'm going to get emotional for her. Like, seeing that experience through just experiencing it and then turning around and then it like watching somebody else experience that that was an insane incredible moment And so that was super special. We ended up going to a lot of different different places with different terrain and different levels and different winds. I like genuinely can't think of anything that bummed me out. And I'm not saying that to like kiss your butt, but like like I would tell you, but I gen I literally I cannot think of anything. You you two are the most amazing people in the world. This experience was the most amazing thing in the world. And Basil's the best thing in the world. And he did so well. I mean, he just excelled from the first first day. It was just, it was incredible. And I, I truly don't think that there was anything that truly bumped me out. Or you know what? The only one is that I wish Basil was the most fit bird in the entire world and could fly for 24 hours straight so I could just keep keep going. That's really what bummed me out. <laughs> and, I don't, and I don't know what we can do to fix that, but you guys should start working on it because that would be cool. <laughs>